this work is based on research that was uh, conducted at Manchester University over the last decade by the, the Hampson professors. And uh, it, it's a repurposing of an older drug, uh, a drug that was used for HIV for, um, called Calitra was the brand. But what we're doing is, is making it into a different formulation, making a special combination of ingredients and it's really focused on delivering uh, the active drug to the, the cervix which is where there's, in the cases where they're high grade dysplasia. So normally that condition would need surgery. It takes, it takes a while, um, I mean the primary research is, was done and it, it's uh, now progressed to end of phase one but we're probably five years into the development and we're just about to you know, do a contract to license for North America to work with a partner and that's fantastic. That will take us through phases two and three over the next few years. So probably by the mid 2020s to the later 2020s there'll be a product coming onto the market if we meet all the safety and all of the efficacy markers but it's like a 10 year commitment even for repurposing. We've got about six projects that are on, on the go and in different stages of development and our plan is to really advance those to a point where we have safety and proof of concept data in humans and then look for a licensing partner to sort of spread the risk over a number of uh, assets because there really is a um, putting it all on, on one, one medical opportunity when there's a more than 50% chance of failure uh, is, is quite high risk. We've, uh, we've been doing phase two trials and slightly over 200 patients have been treated with the drug. We've had a tremendous response rate. Over 70% of those who, who took the medicine are well within one week. And these are patients who have had depression now for 10 years or more, often have tried more than four or five antidepressants and they have nothing apart from electroconvulsive treatment or basically toughing it out. Um, so we had such good uh, you know, results from the phase two and feedback from their physicians and families that we had to set up a compassionate use program as well. So in Australia and New Zealand there are still 90 patients that are on treatment and the rest of the time we are focusing really hard on going into phase three trials, preparing for that, looking for partnering and to get uh, you know, an NDA, what we call a new drug application, uh, filed in the United States as soon as possible. Inflammatory bowel disease is, is very, you know, a very serious condition and um, there are a number of treatments options out there but probably a third of patients are refractory or just don't respond to first line treatments and this is what got the interest of uh, clinicians who approached us about an old drug that's almost forgotten, almost died away called thioguanine and they've found anecdotally that they have patients that respond to that remarkably when they don't respond to uh, standard drugs. So we've got interest from an advisory board in the United States and Europe and Australasia and Murray Barclay from Otago University is leading some initial trials and it looks, it looks very promising as a, a topical treatment. So thinking about the, the gastrointestinal tract like a skin, the, in, the skin within and uh, treating it where, where the inflammation is. And so we'll come up with a few different dosage forms for treating different parts of the GI tract and run those three trials over the next year or two to bring all the functions together that are actually responsible for getting to that outcome of a clinical trial. We've now got one campus where we have our, the formulators, the clinical research managers, the medical research managers and regulatory people all together, all sort of cross-pollinating ideas and project management team. And we've got a laboratory that's enormous built for the next, I'd say, 20 to 50 years of capacity and three suites in which we can actually manufacture clinical supplies.